And number 25, we have the times for eight runners using a regular shoe and a new shoe. This is a matched pair, so there are only eight runners. And so, for example, on the first runner, to run the mile, it took 321 seconds, a little about almost five and a half minutes. And then with the new shoes, it took slightly less time to uh, run the mile, three seconds left to be exact. Well, it's that three seconds, that difference, which is the really the variable in this case. That's our X or our D. If you call it X, then you can just use a regular one sample t-test without making any kind, any changes in symbols. Of course, if you want to call it D, there's a row of the table and uh, you can just use D bar and SD and that kind of thing instead of the normal X bar and S and so on. Well, anyway, it's one sample of those differences in our research hypothesis is going to be that the population mean for null equal to zero and for the alternative depending on how which way you subtract I'm going to do the regular minus the new so mine will be mu greater than zero which would mean that it took longer with the regular shoe than the new shoe you could subtract the other way and say less than but um, you, you just need to be consistent with that so I'm going to uh, now pull up my calculator too many icons there we go and I'm going to stat edit and you can see in lists 1 and 2 and L1 and L2 that I have entered the times for the regular and the new shoes and I've already done it I'll clear list 3 and just show you exactly what I did here List three is where I'm going to put those differences. Example, for example, the first runner, I want that to end up being three, the 321 minus through 318. So if you highlight the L3 at the top, then I can write a formula down here that will um, do those calculations for me. Second L1 minus second two. So L1 minus L2, you can see the L1 and the L2 are just up to the other upper left corner of the ones and twos. Well, anyway, I hit enter, and there they are. Though those are my differences now. Uh, the length of time. This is how much longer it took with the regular shoe than the new shoe is one way to put it. Or you can look at it as how much faster they got to. So now to run the, to, it says to compute the statistics, and I'm also going to have to in the later part get the p value. Turns out that I can do all of that in one step or one fell swoop here I'm going to go to the one sample t-test I'm going to input data my mu zero is zero my data are in list three that's where I put those differences and this is going to be greater than and then calculate and among the things you'll see there is an X bar of 3.625 and a standard deviation of 4.438. That's what question B is asking for, is can we find the relevant sample statistics? And the relevant statistics are the sample mean, the sample standard deviation, and of course the sample size is 8. And we have that as well. The p-value there, let's go ahead and uh, make note that that is uh, 0 0.027. I'll move this out of the way then if I can. Move this over here. We want to draw the sampling distribution uh, fully labeled including the p-value. And there that is center of the distribution is mu equal to zero. It's the mean of the differences. You can see our sample mean is 3.625. It is a distribution of sample means where the x is the difference and our p-value is 0 0.027. That's part C. For part D, we want to get an if-then statement and we want to do it in terms of the hypotheses 
or just because it's a little bit easier, I'll do the hypotheses. We reject HO if it's less than 0.05. Therefore, we reject HO and conclude that mu is greater than zero. I put their new shoes are faster, but I have to say that's not necessarily true. It may be that there's no difference in the shoes, other than the fact that when you give people a new pair of shoes, it makes them happy and they want to run faster um, that first time they run in the new shoes. So it might be the shoes or it might just be some other psychological effect of getting a new or, or, or free shoes. They're free. And then our if-then statement. I'll bring the picture back in here. If the population mean is zero, and that's what we have here, the population mean is zero, then there's a p-value chance. There's this next part that sometimes people have trouble with, that we get a sample statistic, an x-bar, that's greater than or equal to 3.625. The reason it's greater than is because our alternative hypothesis was mu greater than zero. So whatever direction or directions that goes, that's the direction the p-value will go.